welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the year five, season two, mid-season designer notes. We're going to be discussing what they entail. We're going to be giving our thoughts and opinions on it. I'm Ryan. I'm Kyle. I'm Austin. All right, so first up, we're going to look at the attacker's win rate and pick presence. You can see the pick rates are on the bottom here, and it's what percentage of games they're in. And on the left-hand side is their win delta, which is how their win rate stacks compared to the average win rate of attackers. So you can see on the top right corner, we have the people that are overpicked and they're too strong. The bottom right corner, we have the people that are overpicked but too weak. The bottom left-hand corner, the underpick in two weeks, which these are the people you probably would want to buff. And the top left corner are the people that are really strong but aren't very picked. So some of the interesting ones to look at is the new operators who got an ed in the game, which you could first see Ace. Ace is already the third highest pick rate attacker, and he's one of the highest win rate attackers there too. Are you guys surprised by that at all? No, not at all. Like, it was, yeah. Given how versatile Ace is, I kind of already expected it. Mm-hmm. I think he's very versatile and blows up a lot of defense strategies that were currently in the game. I also think eventually when he gets added to Pro League, when people see how pros play with him, that he's going to become even stronger and more picked. Um, but So uh, when is he added to Pro League? When there's, does it actually there's, a, there's a six month great period since when he comes out when Pro League players get to play him. Oh, so he God. came out a little over a month ago, whatever, so then it will be, it'll be more towards the end of the year. Yeah. Um, a couple other interesting ones is Blackbeard is the highest win rate operator, but his presence is below average, or below what is expected, which I'm not I'm not that surprised with it because you know the shield is strong. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Are you guys surprised that Blackbeard's so high up? I mean, I am a little bit. I know his his ability is strong, but I'm still a little a little mm. surprised that his win rate is mm -hmm. very high. I'm I'm more surprised about the Finca, but I know Finca has been up here majority of season, so I'm not that surprised with it. The more the more shocking ones we should look at is the people that are underpicked and too weak, because those are the people we want to see buff. Um, which the two ones that fall really really low are Fuse and Glass, which to me I didn't expect Fuse actually to be this low. I expected him to be in this category, but I didn't think. His win rate would be second worst out of all attackers because he does have the AK-12, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But, but, so, we're going to talk about the changes later, but Fuse is one of the people receiving a change, and this is probably one of the reasons because his pick rate's really low. Another good thing to look at is the people that are pretty smack in the middle, perfect on presence and perfect on win rate, and the closest ones are Maverick, Twitch, and Thermite. Those people are all about average, which is... Uh, pretty pretty surprising. Those are your most balanced ones. I and mean, I'm not surprised to see Ash and Zofia as the highest two picked operators. That's that's kind of a given. That's how Siege has always been. Even though they're, they're overpicked, they still are somewhat balanced with yeah. their one right now. Mm -hmm. Just something. Exactly. None of these people that are on the overpicked category are super high up, which we like to see. I'm actually surprised that Nock, is, Nock and Cali are up here in win rate percentage. You know I mean? Yeah, Pretty Cali and more than Glass. I'm just surprised. About yeah, I mean, they're up there. No, never mind. It makes sense. Cali they're still below average. Yeah, they're still yeah. below average, but they're they're still solid. That's that's honestly, they're not in a bad spot. You would like to give them a little bit more so they get played more, but they're not in a horrible spot there. All right, so let's move on to the defenders from there and see what we think of that. That's I think is going to be the more interesting one. So for the defenders, the first thing you notice is that Jaeger's presence is still off the chart, and even though they have nerfed him, giving him only two speed. So do you think it's time that Jaeger gets another nerf, or do you think Jaeger's been nerfed too many times? I mean, well, I mean, nerfs are necessary when they when they need to happen, mm -hmm. and there obviously is a reason why he's still picked as much as he is because he's insanely strong. I don't know what they would do to nerf him anymore, though. So like, What else would you do to nerf him? I'll, I'll tell you my, my one idea that I've heard floating around. Well, you see, his pick rate's also very... I mean, his win rate's also pretty high, too. The one shocking to me is Castle is the lowest win rate in the whole defense, and even worse than Chachanka and Warden. 
So to me, I think Castle needs a buff and Jaeger needs a nerf. So I've heard a lot of people saying this, and I actually don't think it would be crazy. But what if they switch the guns on Castle and Jaeger? Oh boy. Jaeger having the UMP, now that's... Jaeger's utility is still there, so if you want him for the utility, you would still pick him. But his play, his play will be, he'll be on the chart then. You know, He's not getting picked in 95% of games anymore with the UMP. It's also going to make Castle, Castle needs a buff to get stronger, because clearly his pick rate is that, his win rate is that low. And his pick rate's low, so... The Carbine does give him a valid reason to be picked. So, I... I honestly don't think that's a crazy idea. Do you think that's the trend that they should do? The people, the operators that don't, or the uh, operators that are underpicked should get the better guns, and the well, operators that have their utility set in stone get the weaker guns in general. I don't think it's not. I don't think it's just because he's underpicked. I think it's also because he's the lowest win rate. Also, he doesn't need to just get a more a better gun for oh, comfortability. Yeah. I don't think he gets picked because he has the UMP and that's not comfortable. But he's also doing performing so bad so having a stronger gun will make more people pick him and make his win rate go up but i think castle in general should get a better gun no matter what and even not the swapping thing oh, yeah and jaeger that was one example if they don't switch jaeger's gun then i think he has to go down to two ads's but i don't I mean, even or they could just buff the UMP. yeah but i i don't know i don't know about that because then you worry about pulse also which is perfect on the win percentage you know yeah. um so, but yeah, like I was saying, if they don't switch guns, that idea, I think they would take half a tick and ADS off of Jaeger, but I actually don't even know if that will affect his pick rate that much. Mm. Are you are you surprised that Valk Valkyrie and Bandit aren't surprising for 2 and 3 for me? Doc is usually up here, but Doc is considered someone that people don't view as that strong, so... But I could see why he's up here at the top. Let's let's look at Malusi because she's the most added one. She's tied for the top. She's literally up here at the top win rate, and she's the fourth highest picked person. Do you think she's got to get nerfed again? I think something's got to change with uh, her. All right. Um. To me personally, uh, Malusi. Ever since her yeah, ever since her Banshee's range got nerfed like two times. I I don't think she's as oppressive as she once was I, I don't think she's she's strong but i don't i want to say she's broken right now i i i think her banshees aren't as oppressive but her kid is just so complete well-rounded like completely full there's nothing she lacks she's got the secondary gadget she's got the gun she's got the speed and then she's got a solid set and forget a gadget there's nothing she doesn't have i i agree with what ryan said with I don't think she's as oppressive as she was due mm -hmm. to the nerf. Um, I mean, obviously her pick rate still looks really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's nothing, nothing crazy like Jaeger or whatever. But, yeah. but this is showing she's uh -huh. one of the strongest operators. Um, as far as set it and forget it gadgets, I think Jaeger is still stronger than her. Which I no, think he needs course. more attention. Than her. Mm -hmm. Something like, I, my, I just, my thoughts, like, turned completely 180 from a loose end. You don't think she's crazy? I mean, when she first came out, I thought she was going to be in. Well, she was. I thought she was insane. But now I don't think she's... I don't think she should be the main focus right now. I mean, she does, though. She does have the highest... She's the only operator in that's actually played over 20% that's, you know, this high on the win rate. Yeah, and then, like I'm not, I'm not saying there isn't a problem. There is a problem with her. I just don't think she's broken. Mm -hmm. But I, she, she needs a change. I'm not saying she shouldn't need a change. But right now, I think Jaeger needs a change more. Mm -hmm. Something especially interesting, especially given the current meta. Something interesting to me when I've looked at previous season ones, usually the, and even though these are underpicked people, the people that were always towards the top with high win rates were the trap operators, Capcan, Ella and Legion were usually all the way towards the top, and they've actually went down a little bit this season. So I'm kind of surprised by that, why why they uh, aren't one of the tops. Because I remember last season, Capcan was the best win rate. I mean, he was only picked still less than 10%, but he was the best one. So that's a little interesting to me. Um, are you surprised with Clash Warden? I'm surprised with Mira. Mira? 
What, only yeah. being a 15 percentish presence? You thought she would be picked more? I thought her win rate would be higher. Yeah, I mean, it's still above like the her. average. Yeah. I'm just surprised that someone like Alibi is higher. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not surprised by... I mean, I'm, I am surprised by that, but... I mean, they are both very small sample size. And Mira, we know... We're, we don't see a lot of Mira because of her ban rate, so... That's all. I mean, it could be a reason, too. And I think it's Mira's very strong on some sites and not strong on others, so... It could be a reason well, why your win rate's thing. not as good. Yeah, the maps if, that you do play Mira on... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should be winning almost 100% mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised to see Frost very low towards the bottom? Because she was a trapper also, and trappers are usually towards the top on win rate, but she's one of the lowest win rates. Frost, no. Frost, people are starting to... More people in our division catch on to Frost traps a lot more than Cap can trap, surprisingly. I'm not surprised. Like, Frost is really easy to counter now. I've... Not a surprise. And the one thing I've always found interesting is this is every season. Smoke is one of the lowest win rate attackers. I mean, de sorry, Smoke is one of the lowest win rate defenders, but he is always picked. He's always one of the top five, top six played people. And I think that's because Smoke is very, very hard to play, and people know how good he is. And even if they do bad with him, they still try to play him. But I'm not surprised Smoke is down here. But he is very good, even though he is this low. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to add was a lot of the defenders are smack in the middle here compared to the attackers. We have Echo right in the middle, Mazi, Wamai, Cade, Mute's right about the middle. So I think that's overall very solid. It shows there's a lot of defenders that are very balanced, which yeah. I'm, yeah, the interesting one for me is Mazi receiving the nerf, losing the super shorty. If I flip over to the last season one, you can see Mazi was over here, one of the most overpicked strong operators so to see mozzie get put back into a perfect spot is very good to see wama has always been around this certain area so that's also solid mute the other one i'm surprised about is echo because in previous seasons he was slightly higher but he has dropped a little bit back down so i think that's solid and he's been getting banned a little bit less too so that's good it's people actually get to play echo again which is nice because it's been a couple years all right. Uh, is there anything else that's crazy here? I think it's nice that Pulse is right on it, Visual's right on it, Doc. That I think the overall it's looking pretty solid. I think Castle needs a buff, Jaeger needs some changes, and then maybe Malusi. Oh dear. After that, but otherwise, a lot of the defenders look pretty well. All right. Oh. So now we're moving on to the ban rates for this season, and this actually starting off with the attackers first. This is the first season since banning has been introduced that Jackal was not the most banned attacker. Thatcher's number one was 50%, and Jackal's number two was 43%. And then Montaigne and Blackbeard right behind him, those have always been there. Jackal's always been two or three. These four are always usually top four. But seeing Thatcher get pushed above Jackal is a little surprising. Almost 50% of games, Jack Thatcher's being banned. That's mm -hmm. a little crazy. I mean, he is so broken, but... I mean, I'm not surprised by it. I'm just surprised that it came out of nowhere, really, where everyone just decided, let's just ban Thatcher. Yeah, it just kind of happened. I'm not just mm -hmm. in there, it seemed like. I'm not I'm surpri surprised that Go ahead. Ace isn't higher than maybe, like, Montaigne. Mm -hmm. I'm but, surprised that he's in, like, yeah, like, third or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they are very, very close, but it is his first season. But I, I'm not surprised he's on here. He is very strong. And then you were gonna, you're gonna expect your Nomad and your Habana in there, might just they're all very very low percentages. But overall, I think that's solid. Maverick majority of it's probably Clubhouse. That's where he's most banned. I know that. But I think that's the biggest change is right here with the one and two. Now with the the defenders is where we get really interesting. This is the first time since the uh, the banning phase has been added that it hasn't been Echo and Mira as the one and two. Top one and two. Malusius made her way already beat top two. We have Mira still in first with 64%. Malusi in 61. Echo in 40. Clash coming in fourth, which we expect. Valkyrie, kind of expect that too. And then everyone else is really small. Cade, Miestro, you know. Those really aren't significant. But are you guys surprised that Malusi is already 61% ban rate? 
No. 61. Regardless of what I said earlier, like she still is, she's she still is strong. Yeah. And she's new, so a lot of people are gonna play her, and people know that. People know that she's gonna be picked a lot, and they don't ban her. So. Yeah, especially because she's new. I think she's gonna be played every single round if you don't ban her. So it's one of those things if you want, if you don't ban her, you're gonna have to deal with her every round. So just let's just be comfortable and get her out of the way. But Echo only at forty percent. This is the lowest he's been, which I think is great. It's the, it's the silver yeah, lining in this. Get yeah, getting <laughs> actually getting to play Echo again. Now we're gonna move on to the balancing changes for the operators that is gonna be coming in the future. So the first operator getting changed is gonna be Fuse. I'm sure this is because he is one of the lowest win rates and pick rates right now. They are increasing his total number of cluster charges from three to four. Are you guys surprised by this change? Did you expect it coming? Yeah, I expected it. Just because I'm of what surprised. they did the last time uh-huh. with Fuse in the last uh, update or patch notes. I, I think... I mean, I know he needs a buff somehow. I don't know if this is the best buff because he already has so much cluster... Like, he could do so much work with the cluster charges. But I don't know how else you buff him at this point. Unless you make him two speed... There's not much more you, way you can make him better. He's already got a great gun, great secondary gadget, you know. Unless you're giving oh, him two was, uh, Talking about earlier, but I, giving him another cluster charge won't really change that much. Like, it, well, number one, it already takes so much time to deploy all three cluster charges. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't do work with any of those three, the fourth one really isn't going to make that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. You can give him ten cluster charges, and his pick rate will still probably be the same. The problem, well, he needs a buff, but giving him more grenades to dispense through floors and stuff won't really change anything. I think that it should be something a little more unique, like uh, one of his cluster charges, and only one having the ability to like deploy through a reinforced wall or a reinforced hatch, albeit at a slower rate, but just something that gives him more necessity towards the team. I don't really know how to describe it. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. So, I was reading some of the things they have here, which one I think is interesting is that it says the, their population target to, for this change is casual and top rank play. I can see the casual side of it, but I, I don't know if top rank, is, this is going to really affect top rank play. But one thing they say in here is they were looking into his performance and they noticed that less than two of his charges are used on average per round. Really? So, how does giving a fourth one, though, make people want to use this charge more? Exactly. I've, then, I played a lot of Fuse, but, and I can tell you that giving him another cluster charge won't solve any of his problems. If people don't only, only get to deploy two cluster, less than two cluster charges around, maybe they got to buff them in a different way, either speeding up the animation of it or something, or if they want more people to use cluster charges... Not giving him an extra one, they're still going to be below two. But, I don't know. I mean, it's st- it's still a buff. It still might get more people playing him. I don't think it's a horrible idea, but I think he might have should have got buffed in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, alright, so we're going to move on to Gridlock. Gridlock uh, is getting a buff to her track stingers. All three of these buffs are going to her, to her gadget. But So, how it's getting changed is... It's increasing the general track stinger deployment speed. So in total, to deploy all the track stingers, it's going from 13 seconds to 9. And then it's going to decrease the individual deployment of each of the track stingers from 0.7 seconds to 0.45 seconds. So each individual one's going to deploy a little bit faster. But one thing they're going to do to compensate for that is there's going to be a small delay when you throw your track stingers to when they start deploying. Right now, it's zero seconds they insta-deploy, to now it's going to be almost a half a second. So it gives the defenders a little a half a second to react to the track stinger when it's thrown. But overall, the track stinger is going to deploy much faster. Four seconds faster from 13 to 9 seconds. That's pretty solid. Do you guys think that this buff was something that Gridlock needed? I mean, let's look at her win rate and her pick rate real quick. She was above average on the win rate, but her presence was very low. So do you think this will make people play Gridlock more? Not directly. 
Yeah, I mean, I could see some people think that she's more useful for going for a plant because you could you could set up all your track stingers much quicker. So, hey, that is a bonus, but I don't know. It might help her out a little bit. What do you think about it, Ryan? Uh, I think it's good. I don't think it'll bring more people to the player that much because the core problem, well, not I want to say problem, but the the core reason why people don't play gridlock is because their ability isn't that good in all cases. Mm -hmm. Even increasing the deploy time of her, her ability doesn't change that core problem. And that's that's the thing that they're not addressing is the core problems with some of these operators. The same thing with Fuse, and now it's with gridlock. But, I mean, it, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So what they say with the change is that the population, once again, is towards casual and top rank play, which I don't know why they keep going with that because... Um, I don't know if that's true, but they say that they just want to make her gadget more comfortable to use, and they don't expect this to make a change, a big impact on her pick rate or her win percentage. So they're just trying, oh, okay. they're just, well, with that it's more of a stated, comfortability sense. change, which I could see yeah. that. Yeah, since they say their intentions, that makes a little more sense. Mm -hmm. And then they said they'll monitor the effect of this change and her influence on her overall play style. Okay, so so basic stuff. All right, so now we have the next one. This is the third and the final change that's gonna happen. So these all these all three of these are very small changes, but this one's happening to orcs. So right now, when he uses his dash through a wall or when he knocks someone over, it depletes all of his charges, no matter how much he has. So now they will no longer deplete the charges. Any of them. All right, we'll just use the one. It won't deplete the rest of them. But they increase the dash charging time, so it no longer takes eight seconds to charge. It goes all the way up to 12. So your dashes come back a lot slower, but when you're actually doing the things you want to do with your dashes, like through walls and knocking people over, you don't lose as many. So now your recovery time, no matter what you go through, is set to 0.5 seconds. Right now it's currently one second for a soft wall and 0.7 seconds after colliding into an enemy. So they're shorting the recovering time a little bit. So overall, it does help him a little bit. But I don't know if it does much to him. Because if we look back at his win rate and his pick rate right now. Where was he? He actually is not the worst win rate wise. But his pick rate is obviously only 4 or 5% here. But he's not that low on pick win rate. So it's more of a comfortability thing which makes sense. They want to buff his pick presence. So, yeah. do you think this will help make more people pick orcs? It could. People that actually like orcs, this might help them. Yeah, but those are the people that are already playing orcs. I don't think anybody knew it was going to play orcs just because of those changes. Mm -hmm. But it's, an, it's another comfortability thing. That's just how I look at it. Like. More practicality, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, what they say here for it is, once again, their population is casual and top rank play. Which, nice. I think they that should... One, I, mm -mm, I think they should say casual. Though. I don't think it will affect top rank play, but it could be casual. And they say that the, the, his presence is much lower than they expected, and their goal is to increase his mobility and make him more popular and fun to play. So it sounds like more casual, not really top rank, but increases survivability uh. Okay. Overall, our goal is to make Oryx a better roamer. Okay. I mean, I guess this is a step in the right direction. A buff is better than no buff. But I don't know if it will have a big impact. None of these three changes I don't think will make a crazy impact. So overall, all three of these changes are very minor. and Which is expected because a lot of these operators, as we saw, are pretty close to balance. None of them are crazy. Crazy, you know, too high or too low. Except maybe Jaeger. I would I expect that they would have done something with Jaeger because he's too low. And I'm actually surprised Castle was really low. But after this, they have some retrospective little look back on their balancing changes they did from the last season. We're going to take a look at this real quick. So first up, you remember when they changed tomorrow last season? Or how our gadget worked? Yeah. So... They say this season, let's look at how she changed on the chart real quick before we read what they say about her. So we can see, where is she right now? Amaro's actually above average win rate, but she's still at a 10% pick rate. If we take a look at last season, 
she was still slightly above average, and she was at about a 5% pick rate. So it, it didn't really increase her win rate, but a little bit more people are playing her. So I don't think it was crazy, but they, they do say they think they made a significant improvement on her win rate and her presence, but it was a little bit. They said Hamaru's KD following a grapple hook has significantly improved from a 0.45 to a 90%, a 0.90 in top rank play. And is in, in casual, jump. and in casual, they went from 0.45 to 0.96 in casual players, which makes sense because they increase the recovery time, and through the and when you no longer break the barricade, it's much harder for people to expect it. So I'm not mad at that. And they say now her grapple hook on barricaded windows, it went from getting used 38% of the time to 68% or 60% of the time. So, people are actually utilizing her not breaking the barricades anymore. Been a very solid improvement for her. I will say the Amara changes were really good for her. Yeah, I think they were smart. You can see this graphic here, and it shows exactly every time, every, what percentage she used her repel gadget on. So, you could see, like, the barricaded windows from last season compared to this season. Like Amara well. is an example She's the perfect example of a buff done right mm. that addresses a serious issue she had. You are using her repel on the window, and it breaking before she got there was a yeah. core issue, and they fixed it. I mean, I still think the she's underperforming, so I think she needs oh, yeah. a little bit more to be balanced and be viable. But, it, but it, that they, buff she did was a really yeah, good it was stuff. Good. So now we got orcs here again, which are, we just read they're changing again. But his buff last season. Added angle grip onto him, which a lot of people I thought would make a big impact, but I know it says here the vertical grip is still getting picked 59% of the time. So, to me, I'm not surprised. I mean, I am surprised by that number because I think the angle grip should be getting picked more, but I think the reason why vertical grip is picked 59% of the time right now and not the angle grip is I think a lot of people didn't realize angle grip got added. And they just had vertical grip on beforehand. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably, yeah. So, I think that could be a big reason. The update came out. People already had vertical grip on. They were clicking him. and So, that could be. But he has a better KD. His KD's up to a 1. Hmm. A 1? From what was it previously? It doesn't say what it was previously. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, but it talks about how his usage has been up a little bit. And casual... Before this, oh, before this season, casual players did not use his dash in 22.5% of rounds. Does that mean not use one dash the whole entire round? How can you do almost one-fourth of the rounds not use one dash at all? But now it's down to 17%, so it dropped from 22% to down to 17 So now, next up, we got the next person who changed, which was Echo. So, Echo, so they talk about it more being a nerf, but... It talks about how his levels have seen a reduction in the percentage of kills to disoriented targets. Which I'm a little surprised by that, because that disorientation lasts longer, so I wouldn't expect a reduction. Yeah. This percent damage, or the percent of kills that are effect, while affected by yokai drones went from 45%, almost 48%, down to 40 in ranked. That, that, that's surprising to me. And in casual, it went from 46 to 40 and more the changes they did to it? They made it so it doesn't change when you're moving around. It just lasts base ten seconds, which is longer. But you don't get you don't get more of effect when you move. That's why I'm surprised. Then they talk about how his ban rate has dropped down from sixty eight percent to thirty eight percent. Now that is a very, very, very big change. Like geez, that's yeah. such a big change. Yeah. I, then, I love seeing that, though. Mm -hmm. I really do like seeing that. And then they said the addition of Malusi has probably directed effect Echo's ban rate, which is a part of it. That's true, yeah. Yeah. So that's good. I don't know. I don't really call this a nerf. I'm surprised that the number went down, but I also think the reason why that number could have went down is because people are playing with Echo for the first time since they have in a long time. So a lot of people might not be used to 
hitting them with the Yokai drone and then killing them. So that's maybe why the number went down because we have new Echo players being played, playing them. But uh, that's good to see his ban rates down. So even if that really wasn't the Echo change, it's it's a positive. Yeah, I agree. All right, so let's move on to Cali. This is our last and final one. So remember, Callie got the new the new secondary, as well as a couple different changes to her. Mm -hmm. Callie's lance has led to 13% reduction in lances destroyed per round at top rank. Her uh, her lance led to 13% reduction in lances destroyed. That's the I guess gadget. oh because they sped up the time or they decreased the time yeah, it takes dec- for it to activate. They so which means that, I guess. But can they you didn't destroy? get bandit trick this oh, much. Oh, okay, bandit trick. I yeah, guess that's what they like mean by that. destroying. So it's getting yeah. bandit trick less in 13% in top ranked and 10% in casual. Casual right, levels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the speeding it yeah. up did make it really, It seems really like hard the fuse to... time reduction made it a little bit harder for defenders to counterplay it. Okay, mm. that's a positive. And then we noticed a 10% increase in gadgets destroyed uh, per round, which is also very good. That means she actually gets to do what her utility does. Right. And then... I mean, of course, uh, that's going to be proportional to mm. not being dis- not being countered. Yeah. The one, the one small, the one small change they had, remember, they reduced the recoil of her sniper? Yeah. They said the recoil reduction is a slight, a small, small positive change, although blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so nothing crazy with that. The number of kills per round has decreased with their sniper because of the addition of her new secondary. That I'm not surprised about. I figured more people are more comfortable with their new secondary, so less there'll be less sniper kills. You can really get away with just using only your secondary. Not so, even worrying about her sniper, other than just using the gadget. Last season, 35% of Cali's kills came from the C-75, and the remaining 65 was her sniper, obviously. This season, almost 49% are coming from her new SMG, the SPS. So almost half her kills are coming from her secondary. Where last season, only 35% was coming from the C-75. So you can see a lot more people are comfortable with the SPS over the C-75. Wait, so let me... Is is that her new secondary? Is it actually considered a pistol or is it considered a machine pistol? So it's a pistol, okay. Machine pistol, machine yeah. Pistol. Both, both the C-75 and the SPS are both considered machine pistols. Okay. Hmm, interesting. And her pick rate is went up slightly in casual and top rank. That's because more people are more comfortable there. So overall, it was an effective change. More people are more comfortable with their secondary. Less relying on the sniper. And her gadgets becoming more effective. So there was really... It really achieved the two goals that needed to be. I don't know if it was to the extent Cali's we wanted... Good, yeah. Uh, I think she's still a little underperforming, but I don't think she's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I say that she's a viable choice if you need a, uh, like a pseudo Thatcher. Yeah. Or well, if Thatcher's banned, she's definitely viable now. They they say here her win delta saw a small increase from negative two percent to negative one point six percent, and then there was no change for regular players. So oh, top ranked it went up a little bit, but regular players it still stays the same at negative one point nine percent. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So top play, which makes sense. People that are really good with her can do a little bit better with her now. But the majority of the population that still aren't perfect with snipers and everything. I'm not surprised with that. I thought that giving them the machine gust, machine pistol would alleviate that a little hmm. bit. But overall, I think for all these the lookbacks on the old changes, overall every single one did their intended job. They helped every single operator out a good bit. Maybe not as enough where they're actually good, as in Cali Orcs and Wam- Amaru's case, but it gave them a step in the right direction. So I think that was very good overall. So, and overall, I think the three new changes coming are very. Lackluster, I would say. I don't think any of them are anything I mean, special. I, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Nothing. To me, I really something is better than nothing at least. So. Yeah, but like, I don't know because two people that are changing Oryx and Gridlock are already at a decent, not a horrible win rate. They should be buffing these people that are on the bottom of never pick two week. Like I know Chachanka is getting a rework, 
But they Castle needs a buff. Castle needs to be a viable an option. Sometimes, you know what I mean? He needs a buff. I mean, though, to be fair, like Castle, he did get buffed not too too long ago by receiving the super shotty. I think his potential's there. I just think that people don't know how to utilize it as well. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm 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 only speaking from my own personal experience mm-hmm. because uh, whenever I use Castle, I I think he's really good. I mean, mind you, they did take away his impacts, and that probably hurt him a little bit yeah. as well. That that could be a reason. I don't know. I mean, they do a lot of. I mean, they do a lot of change, multiple changes back to back. Like they change Jaeger multiple times back to back. They'll do some changes here and there. So I don't know. I mean, I think I I don't I don't want to. I just don't want to see. Kid is super well rounded. I know, but it's just I think it's really the UMP. But what what makes his kid? What makes Pulse so much better on the win percentage when they both have the UMP? His gadget is just so much stronger than Castle's right now. And you can't change Castle's gadget, obviously. There's not much ways you could really buff it unless you give him more Castle barricades, but I don't know if that's the right thing to do. But they got to do something to get him where Pulse is. You know? Maybe they give him a C4? Nope. I don't know. I don't. They gotta do something. There that's shouldn't what give them wings. There shouldn't be an operator that's so low here on pick rate and win rate, and they're not doing something about it. I think Glass too. They should try to change somehow too. Even if some, even if they're doing something small, why don't they do the small things for these operators that are both low on the pick rate right, well, and the win rate? Let's let's uh, be theoretical here. What would you change about Glass? I think you do a full rework to him. Do something crazy. Change his whole play style. I mean, I would still keep the concept of a sniper, maybe, or maybe you just make it a different type of marksman rifle, but I think you just do a complete rework of him. If he's been this low for this long, it's been years since Glass has been good, and they haven't really changed him. I mean, they gave him frag grenades a year ago or so, whatever, maybe two years ago, but that didn't do anything for him. You gotta do something, you know? All right, that's going to conclude today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give us a like down below. Also, if you could please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of your videos. Remember, we post every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.